Zealander. Ah, Gary, what about you, hey? Eh? Hey, man of the moment, hey. <laughs> Captain Shammy. I beg your pardon. I want a signed copy of this paper before the day's oh, out. Oh, they've not put it in that paper, have they? Of course they've put it in that paper, eh? Well deserved, Gary boy, eh? I'll tell you what. You'll be on the telly by this afternoon. Hey, oh, let's look more. at it. Right, there you go. Read all about it. Have a go, Gary. It gets laurels from Harder. Oh, dear, dear, look dear. Look at photographs. She's all over you. Ah, oh, you didn't seem to make a bit of an impression there, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Weatherfield window cleaner got more than he bargained for when he peered through the window of Weatherfield House by Sonia Hardy. He saw a man ransacking her bedroom. Uh huh. Mrs. Hardy, a former runner up in the Miss Golden Sands Holiday Camp Regional Final of 1991, said. Oh, what did she say? I don't know what I would have done without Gary. He's a real man. I can't wait for him to come round and do my windows again. All my friends want him as well, but I've told him he's mine. Oh, uh, well, there you are now. Flaming cheek! Right, listen, read what the police say. Superintendent Ronald Featherstone said, We commend Mr Mallet for his coolness in the face of adversity. This is exactly the example we need to set for other upright, law-abiding citizens <laughs> who want to keep our communities free of crime. Oh, oh Gary! You've got two minutes, ladies. Dad? Ah, oh, what about you, son? Where have you come from? You must be an early riser. I've uh, been to see a man, as he say. Oh, have you? Well, he must have been up with a the lark, then. Yeah, sort of. He's, uh, he's catching a ferry. Oh, somewhere nice? Belgium. The answer's no, then. Uh, listen, Dad, get in a minute. What do you mean, get in a minute? I have to go to work. I can't go swanning off anywhere like you. We're not going anywhere. I just want a word with you and a bit more privacy. Well, I'll catch you later back at the house, then. How's that? No, 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 Dad, now. It's, uh, it's important. You're in trouble, aren't you? No. No, I'm not. Go on, then. <sighs> I've, uh, I've got a chance to make some money. Not loads, but enough to cover off my VAT and uh, get me back on my feet again. Well, oh, glad to hear it. Where do I fit into this? I need capital. How much? 800. Go to your bank. Not exactly the kind of thing the bank would be interested in. Oh, really? Well, what a surprise. What a surprise. <laughs> well, then, what's the crack? Tobacco rum. <laughs> <laughs> the backy run, you. <laughs> Mind you, why else would you go to Belgium? What about this other fellow? Well, he's got nothing to do with it. I was just getting some tips off him. But, Dad, it's easy. It's oh, cinch. Ha, cinch dead easy. Oh, aye. Especially now the authorities are clamping down, aren't they? Exactly. Some more of a reason to go and do it quickly. 800 quid, Dad. I'll earn enough money to clear me debts. Mm. Make you a nice little earner then as well. Certainly. Right, stuff it then. No, 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 listen, just tell your horse no. for a minute, will you? No, forget it. I've got to go anyway. Look, <sighs> Stephen, I don't want to see you back in the big house. That's all now. You can understand that, can't you? Yeah, well, whatever. Listen, don't let me keep you. Look, I'm not going to end up back in prison because of the backy, am I? It's going to be because of the VAT. See you later. Yeah, whatever. Reform Act passed in 1832 because... 1. Working class rights of 1830 to 32. 2. Fear of revolution. 3. Support of the middle classes. 4. Uh, activities of radicals like Francis... Place. Francis Place. You all right? No, I'm not. I'm a nervous wreck. Why? Because I'm right in the middle of my exams. Here, ask us a question. When are you going to move all this junk off the table? Hey! Hey, don't do that! That's my revision! You all right, well? Yeah. No! I've got my history exam in an hour and a half and she's about to chuck all my notes away. Don't do that, Leanne. How am 
I meant to prepare for me exams when I've got you chucking me notes away and you making that racket? Hey, come on, love. If you don't know it by now, you never will, will you? Oh, well, thanks very much. Mm. Intellectuals, highly strong. Quiet round here today. Quiet, I know I. Quiet, I'm ready. Not before time. No, Leanne? No. Not up yet, then? Well, no, well, I mean, we've had a row. Good. Eh? Good. Maybe she'll act with her feet. She already has. Has she? What, gone? Yes. What, moved out? Well done, our Ashley. Well done, yeah. Now, see, I didn't give you sole tenancy so you could adopt every misfit, waif and stray you encounter. This is a respectable house, is this, not a DSS hostel. I'm pleased you've come to your senses. Well, you might not think that when I can't afford pay rent. Small price, Ashley. I say small price. Well, for the time being, any road. Well, it might be to you. But I value friendship. And I certainly value it more than money. Hello? Yeah? What's the matter? Is she all right? Well, when? Yeah, OK, I suppose so. One o'clock. Oh, yeah? Coffee? Cheers. Everything all right? I don't know. That was Rosie's teacher. Can I go and see her this lunchtime? No, no problems. I think so. I think she's being bullied. Oh. <sighs> That's all she needs, isn't it, right now? Well, look on the bright side. At least the school are taking notice of it. That's true. I hate bullies. They should be expelled. They should be expelled and the parents should be sued for bringing him up badly. Hello. Don't worry. I told him I would come to check me holidays. Oh, I see. So, how are you? Me? I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine, thanks, yeah. You? Never better. I was going to get in touch. Um... Oh, you don't have to. No? No. Oh, it's just that uh, I wouldn't want to... Uh... Well, I wouldn't like it getting round that... Uh... What, that I've slept yeah. with boss? Of course you don't. Don't worry, I'm not going to say out. Oh, good, that's great, that's fine. You know, I could always leave, Underworld. Pardon? If it's a problem for you, I'd be happy to leave. Oh, no, no, it's not that at all. It's just that, well... As long as we both know the situation. Which is? Discretion. My middle name. And these are the ones she was doing when she first came into my class. See the difference? These are bright and... Well, these are nasty. I wouldn't go so far as to say that. They're certainly darker, both in content and form. And um, these are her stories. I don't think the stories are an issue in themselves. But see the writing. Rosie can write much neater than this. She certainly can. The question is, why isn't she? It's like she's saying she doesn't care anymore. There's been a change in Rosie recently. In what way? Well, you've been through a lot, all of you. What with the siege. We're beginning to see the effects. That's why I took her away, to help her get over all this. Of course. But it may be more difficult than you think, and it may take longer than you expect. Do you think that's what started all this bullying? You know about that? Well, Rosie told me. You see, contrary to what you think, Mrs Easton, Rosie does confide in me. I am a mother. I do know what's going on. <laughs> I have to say I'm a little surprised. Really? That Rosie would be so open with you. Well, like I said, we've got a very close relationship. Now, I want to know what you're going to do about it. Well, that's really why I asked you here. Well, it's not my job. I mean, if you've got a child in your class who's picking on other children, and in particular my daughter, well, it's down to you to sort it out. I see. I'm afraid we're talking at cross-purposes, Mrs Webster. Are we? Yes. You see, Rosie is the bully.
Mrs Webster, wait. For what? So you can carry on telling me what a naff mother I am? I didn't say that. As good as. You obviously love her very much. Look, I'm not here to pass comments on your parenting, Mrs Webster. I just want to make sure you understand why Rose is misbehaving. She's clearly attention-seeking, which shows she's feeling insecure. It's not surprising with everything that's happened to her. Yeah, well, it's over now. Just as well. Anyway, the past is only relevant so we can work out the future. In Rose's case, that means urgent attention. Don't worry, she'll get it. Leave me to do my job and I'll leave you to get on with yours. What's the problem? Money. Lack of it. Night off. Nowhere to go. Nothing to do. But someone to do it with. Yeah, that's true. So, what sort of nothing shall we do tonight then? Come round to ours. No, uh, we'll, 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 we're going to fix. Dad's entertaining. Well, not all night. Yeah, go on for hours. Well, there you are then. Come for your tea. Oh, that'll be really nice, that will. I will he on and her new young man? Uh, well, maybe. Uh, what do you eat? I mean, do you eat all sorts? Uh, no, don't go to any trouble. Oh, no, love, it's no trouble. I'm looking forward to learning all about you. See ya. Hi. Can I have a bottle of lager and a vodka and tonic, please? Coming up. Thank you. You all right? So-so. It's not too late, you know. Really? We could still make a go of it. I don't think so. It's the last time I'm going to ask. Spend your nights alone. Pathetic. Yeah. You all right? Yeah. What are you doing tonight? Nothing. Fancy a meal? Some uh, home cooking? Yes, thanks, Curly. That would be nice. <laughs> You're behind. I expected 10% more out of you by now. It's too much gossiping, not enough work being done. Now, catch up by tonight, or your bonuses have gone. <laughs> Who does he think he is? Waving his big stick. Forget it. He's all mouth and no trousers in. Careful, I'll hear you. I don't care. Hey, the hero's here. All right, Gary. Can I go out and come back in again? Mm -hmm. The hero's welcome. This morning you was going on about filling me full of ale and celebration of my newfound status. Aye, aye, aye. Sorry, mate. Well, what's up with you, then? Nothing. Same as usual, Stephen. All right. Well, I don't know whether I've done the right thing or not. He's got himself involved with some harebrained scheme and he's asked me to help him. I know it's just going to lead to trouble. What the hell am I meant to do? I mean, I've got to support my own son, you know what I'm saying? Not really. What scheme? Well, he calls it the backy run, so he does. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, what about it? Well, nothing about it, that's it. Well, what's he asked you to do? Well, I've only had to put the money up front for him, so I have. What, and you don't have to go with him? No. So what's the problem? The problem is it's illegal, Gary, you know? Well, no, no, it's only illegal if you try and sell it on. Well, what else is he going to do with them? Sure, he doesn't smoke himself. Ah, that's, yeah, good point. But, um, isn't this some way of paying his VAT bill? Mm-hmm. Aye. Aye, I know, I understand. It's just the thought of him going back into the big house. I can't bear it, honestly. The name of God, sure, he's the only family I've got left. So we have to weigh up, work out your duty as a father or... Or the unpaid duty. Very funny. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Very good. Very good. I'm sorry. So, anyway, what would you do? Well, if it was William, I suppose I'd back him up. And if your Stephen's in trouble, which, which he is, then you're going to help him, aren't you? I know it's, it's the law, but it's family, isn't it? Oh, aye. Tell me this. What was the police said about you in the paper, eh? A rule model? <laughs> <Good job. laughs> now, don't put it up your nose. I've got to eat that later. But we... Hang on a minute. Apparently. Just think, we thought it was the other way about. No, you put the spaghetti in the frying pan. No! Oh. 
Uh, look, there's no sweat or anything. It's just that, well, I'm trying to get a meal done in here and I've got someone coming round. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Curly. Well, just give us another couple of minutes, eh? I'll be in. Okay. Uh, have a word now? with her if you want. Well, it's not as straightforward as that. <laughs> it's not funny. Well, Part of growing up, all kids do it. Well, there's things I've not told you. Oh. Go on, then. She's been picking on this girl in her class. Be nasty to her and pinching her and stuff. Let me know. What's the teacher said? Well, according to her, there's a simple solution. Good. What is it? Rosie needs a lot of love and comfort to get her to feel more secure. <laughs> well, she gets plenty of that when she was with me. What do you mean? What I say? That child didn't want for love and affection when she was with me. And she does when she's with me? Well, the proof's in the pudding. She wasn't into bullying when we was together. Don't be absurd. I can't believe it. We're supposed to be discussing Rosie and you can't resist turning it into point scoring. I'm just telling you like it is, that's all. This is about Rosie and her bullying and what we're going to do about it. Hey, sweetheart. Hey, Rosie. Come here. Ooh, Bayek, you should come more often. <laughs> smashing, love, smashing. Get off her. Chicken nuggets, nestling in some of ketchup. Chips and peas, specially frozen for the freshness. <laughs> hey, I tell you what, why don't you invite your dad over here one night? Um, dad? Oh, it's a good idea. We love entertaining, don't we, Janice? You know, dinner parties, that sort of thing. You see, people don't often see the sophisticated side of the Battersby's. Wes, shut up. No, it's a good idea. What shall we say? Next Saturday night? I'll have to check. You do that. No, no way! What? Listen, Mr Desire'd love to see you in your national habitat. Then he'd see what sort of a special catch his son was getting. Dad, shut up. How many shops has he got now? Wes. Seven. Seven? You play your cards right there, girl. Where are you going? Spiders. To revise in peace. <sighs> Come on. And where do you think you're going? Upstairs. Oh, no, you're not. Not after Janice has gone to all his trouble, you're not. No. We're going to have a nice little foursome. You two can do the washing up while I get to know young Vic here. <laughs> so, um, was that a new recipe? Oh, no, no, no. This is a uh, box standard. Uh, this is my meal for two. I don't often have it. Uh, normally, I just uh, cook for myself. Oh. I have tried to cook it for myself. Uh, spag bowl, yeah. But uh, it never kind of works out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, when I do it for two, it, it comes out really well. But when I have the ingredients and just do it for one, well, it comes out all uh, horrible. <laughs> Whereas in life... In life? Well, my attempts at twos are not very successful. <laughs> but, but what about you? I mean, you're a good cook. I mean, have you got any new recipes? No, no, not really. I mean, Mark was never very adventurous. But I'm going to do just that. I'm going to get lots of new recipes. <laughs> Good. Well, I hope you have better luck with it than I did with my spag bowl. <laughs> oh, don't blame yourself. Cooking's funny like that. I mean, you do everything right according to the book and then just one little ingredient goes and lets you down. Just when you think your preparation's fine, something happens. You see, you've got to be sure of your ingredients and, um, well, sometimes you can't be. I mean, even when you've use that recipe time and time again. But you just have to take them on trust because there's nothing else you can do. You make sure your ground works solid so there's a foundation there for success and um, you work hard so that the uh, mixture's right and sometimes if there's a problem you, you think about it and you, you change the mix so that um, everything just stays okay. And then one little ingredient that you'd always relied on in the past 
does something peculiar. And instead of it all coming out light and delicious, it comes out flat and it tastes bitter. So all the hard work and all the assumptions you made about your recipe just um, don't add up anymore. <sighs> Sorry. No, no, it's all right. It's, um, it's good to be passionate about your cooking. <laughs> There you go. Hey, mate. Oh, yeah. Uh, pint, please. Yep. All right, John. <clears throat> Dad. What's that? That there is a building society book, so it is. And if you come down with me there tomorrow, I'll weigh you in for your steak money. Yeah? Yeah. One condition, though. Go on. It's a one off, right? No problem. Cheers, Dan. Here's some. Large one. Right, yeah. Large scotch for me dad, please, Natalie. Mind. You're in favour. Yes. <laughs> Cheers, Dan. Good luck. Your hero's home again. <laughs> Don't push your luck, you. You only get one hero's welcome a day. I don't know, but stick since that article. Oh, well, it's worth a try. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. One kiss and I'm hearing bells. Go get it, you. <laughs> Gary Mollett. That's right. Who is it, Gary? Hey, hold on. Gary. Some sort of hero, are you? Hey? I know your sort, pal. Window cleaners. You, stay away from my wife. I don't right? even know your wife. Well, you're all over her in every paper from here to the chip shop. I'm warning you, pal. I see you hanging round there again. And I'll take your ladder and ram it somewhere that'll make your eyes water. Understand? 